Okay. Part two. I uh, I am ready to pull this out. Had to remove the windshield wiper motor, and you can see the number of spot welds that were in this panel here up against the firewall. Let's see where I've drilled them out. I tried to drill them and chisel as much as I could to keep my uh, firewall intact. And uh, instead of on the other side, what I did is I drilled out all the pop rivets that went along the top of the outer outer cowl vent or outer vent cowl and then did the same thing across the top of the fire wall here basically cutting my uh, welds the spot welds and then peeling back to get to the uh, the spot was that a far well, further down the uh, firewall that was a lot of work so what I figured I would do over here is give myself a little more access a little bit quicker now I still need to come on and come in and cut this uh, cut this edge off here but what I did is I took my air chisel and I just hugged right up against my firewall right here with my chisel pointing that way hugged right up against the firewall and basically basically cut this loose so now it's out of the way I'll be able to come in here with with like a flat chisel I've got a, a lawnmower blade that I actually sharpened up and thinned out a little bit so I can get under here and beat it with a hammer knock it this way to pop these rivets loose and it works pretty good works a little better it's a little more control than an air uh, than an air chisel so anyhow, um, that is it for the upper cowl assembly removal. Let's see if I can get uh, get you guys a better view here. And that's it. Um, still need to come in and clean the top of my uh, pillar support, uh, my, my door hinge upright and my pillar support here. I gotta cut all this off and clean it all the way down and then get my uh, lower cowl panel. Get this finish cutting it loose and getting it out of the way and what I did um, is I measured before I cut this stuff loose um, to make sure that I didn't mess up my dimensions from the front of the car to the back and get my fenders off what I did is I measured from that slot right down there in the frame that one right there I measured from that slot using a tape measure all the way up to the connecting point for the fender here and the distance between there and there was 37 and a half inches on the other side and 38 on this side so as long as I went a half an inch uh, I did that before I started cutting everything loose because you can see over there <laughs> my firewall is literally about to fall forward um, because of the weight of this this assembly here but anyhow uh, I've got a looks like I've got a couple more spot welds down there that I need to bust loose I'll get this busted loose and get back and show you what this thing looks like with the upper bit cowl assembly um, removed. Be right back. Well, there it is. The uh, 1969 Monte Carlo, oh, El Camino completely stripped of its upper cowl vent panel and both sides of the lower, the ex external, the exterior, the outer lower vent cowl and the inner lower vent cowl passenger side and driver side um, inner lower vent cowl panel down here outer side have to do a little metal work right here um, put this flange back um, again the uh, door pillars are or the uh, hinge pillars are, are, are in decent shape got a lot of metal work to do there but this is it that's what I got done today actually done this weekend um, spent quite a bit of time on it today a little bit of time on it yesterday most of the time yesterday was getting the interior out getting that dash out and stuff and um, I'm gonna go ahead and start budgeting for a new upper vent cowl assembly and the two outer shells for the passenger side and the driver side they're probably going to go back in in the, in the reverse order um, it looks like the proper way to do this the way the flanges were layered with the, within the firewall here it was the firewall and then the inside flange was the um, the uh, outer vent cowl and then on top of the outer vent cowl was the actual upper assembly so um, if I hadn't replaced this upper vent cowl, I'm not sure how uh, I would have been able to get the lower vent cowls in place because 
the upper vent cowl it sits on top of the lower vent cowl so anyhow if anybody is looking at doing that in the future uh, with the uh, 68 or 69 Chevelle or El Camino then that's probably something you might want to consider otherwise you're gonna have to end up uh, modifying either your lower vent to get lower vent cowl to get your upper section on or cutting it removing it out of the way and then reusing it so uh, maybe it's just easier makes more sense to uh, buy another one at least an inner um, they're hard to save it's hard to salvage this stuff when you're hitting it with air chisels and cut off tools and everything else but anyhow I'm gonna throw these up hopefully get these thrown up on uh, on uh, the channel tonight and um, maybe it helped out if you guys have any questions of anything specific about where things are located what it looks like as a matter of fact this is what it looks like here I am gonna keep um, this was a brace that's tied that that is actually spotted up on the top on the inside of the on the inside there so I'm gonna keep that in case it doesn't come with a new one I don't think it does so I'll probably have to reuse that uh, likely reuse this bracket that's that holds the uh, radiate radio support and then also I kept uh, I put my screws back in my bolts and then my screws back in for the um, for the vent to make sure um, that uh, I knew which screws they were so I'm gonna leave this and hang on to it and then I've got this uh, wire loom um, bracket here that is actually spotted to the uh, uh, spotted to the vent panel itself the cowl itself so I'll hang on to that to uh, make sure if I need it I can respot it on the new one uh, so that's pretty much it oh that down there that's a, that's a uh, some kind of horn relay bracket or some kind of relay bracket I'll be hanging on to that too so I'm not going to throw anything away. Mark over at Second Gen had a whole bucket full of stuff that he had saved on the metal they had cut off one of his cars and thought that was a great idea. So you can look at what used to be. And then uh, basically all these spots that I drilled out, um, I'm just going to made up my new surface and then use my MIG to go in and tack these all back in, back into the proper locations. And, uh, oh. They did not want the, uh, they didn't want it coming loose around the windshield wiper motor. There's like a dozen spots all the way around that thing where they'd spotted it all together. And there's a plate that goes in there that, that actually is attached to the, uh, the, the, the windshield wiper motor actually attaches to the upper vent cowl section instead of the firewall. Um, so that hole right there is, uh, is a hole in the firewall for the windshield wiper motor. But anyhow, I'm just rambling. Um, hope you guys had a good weekend. Hope you guys got out there and got to do stuff. I know we had some beautiful weather here. Been up since 4:30 this morning. My wife and I. My wife is a uh, my wife's friend works for a local uh, support organization here, and we had our marathon, and her her group sponsored the marathon. So we were up at 4:30 uh, this morning, uh, getting ready to go downtown and pass Gatorade and water. So I got a decent start today. We got finished up there and we're back at home by 10. So, anyhow, uh, you guys have a great week. And I'll try to get some more stuff posted during the week. I took some pictures. Might throw up a slideshow or something. We'll see. And then I'll let you know how the progress goes on getting my new parts replaced or get my new parts ordered. Y'all take care. KT signing out for the weekend. Have a good one.